Hi, my name is Anushka and I'm a member of Magical Bridges Teen Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Board. For me, communication means that everyone understands and is included in community discussions. No matter how many forms of communication need to be used, it's important that everyone is included and is able to share their thoughts and opinions. Communication goes both ways. Every individual needs to be able to both listen and understand and also voice their thoughts. There are so many forms of communication in the world and when we are interacting with someone, it's important that we all try to make sure that we are communicating in a way that is comfortable for everyone. Whether that means speaking, writing, showing photos, or even just flashing a smile, communication comes in so many different forms that we all need to be conscious and deliberate in how we communicate. What types of communication are there? Hi, my name is Vivian TC and I am a speech language pathologist. So really quickly, um, mainstream communication, this is something where the majority of people communicate this way. So I'm speaking, I'm using my oral mechanism to produce speech, and you are comprehending my message either through listening to this video or reading the closed captioning below. Um, when somebody is not able to produce clear speech for people to understand them, they might have to communicate through alternate means. So some communicators might repair their communication breakdowns through gesturing. They might carry a notebook with them to jot down a message. They might use yes or no answers to let you know that you've misunderstood them and try it again. Um, other times you will see people communicate through pictures. Um, they might be individual pictures that they might give you to show you what they want or need. Um, or they might have a board that has multiple pictures for them to point to touch to put sentences together. And you might see some high-tech uh, communication devices where it's a computerized, um, either tablet, iPad, some sort of little computer that is mobile and portable for them to carry around. And it'll have a program for them to touch different buttons to produce sentences or have a keyboard on there to type out their different sentences. Um, this is all known as AAC or alternative and augmentative communication. It just means it's an alternate way of communicating. What is life like for someone who has a hard time communicating through mainstream ways? Hi, what is your name? Morgan O'Malley. Where do you go to school? Pali. Pali, Palo Alto High School. And what grade are you in? So. We asked Morgan how communication at school is like. How do you communicate to your teachers at school? Very hard and that can people in my family. What barriers make it hard for someone to communicate? One big barrier is that the community, us out here in the mainstream world, we're not well educated on how to be better listeners and support communication partners for people who are not mainstream speakers. And by knowing that these barriers exist, we can start thinking about how we can make our mainstream world a little bit more welcoming for people who communicate in different ways. Here's an example of what you shouldn't do. May I take your order? Yes. What would you like? Huh? I can't hear you. Can you speak up? I don't understand what you're saying. I don't, I just don't know what you want. So what can you do? Hi, my name is Joshua and I'm part of Magical Bridges Teen Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Board. The first thing I want to mention is that when communicating with someone, it's important not to create an unsafe or aggressive environment. As seen in the previous clip, all that does is cause the person you're communicating with anxiety. It's important to always keep the other person's way of communication in mind. For restaurants and stores, it's important to have visuals that can assist people on ordering food or shopping. When communicating, it's important to have a calm voice and remember that just because someone communicates differently it doesn't mean you shouldn't treat them with respect. Now here's what you should do. Welcome to Starbucks. May I take your order? Yes. What would you like? Oh, we have a picture for you to choose from. What would you like? A cookie. Okay, great. I will get that for you. So what can we do at home to support communication? 
Now that more places are opening up, new policies are being enforced to remain safe from COVID-19. We need to make sure that communication policies are also enforced with the reopening so that restaurants and businesses are including people with different abilities. As an individual, make sure that the communication format you're using is understood by everyone. If someone feels uncomfortable or unsure with a form of communication, try something else. Especially now that more interactions are digital, it's very important to check in on each other and make sure that everyone feels heard. We hope this video helped you understand how communication differs from person to person and how to be supportive and inclusive of different forms of communication. Thank you. For more information, visit magicalbridge.org. And remember that over 70% of our communication is nonverbal. So if you aren't sure how to approach it, just use kindness and a smile because sometimes that's all you need.